Another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist, so we're on to number 6 now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So obviously we can only choose from element hydrogen to argon. So the element that forms a 1 minus ion with the same electron configuration of helium, well, the atom's got to have one less electron than helium, and so the answer is going to be hydrogen. Moving on to part two, so the trend in first ionization energy down the group, it decreases, across a period, it increases. So basically, we want the element in our top right hand corner, and so the answer is helium. Moving on to part three, so we've got to choose an element from period three, so that's sodium to argon. So we want to know what group it's in, and we get that from the big jump in successive ionization energies. So you can see that there's a big jump up from second to third. So that means that this element has two electrons in its outer shell. And obviously we're breaking into an inner shell to take the third electron out. So it's magnesium. Part four, the element that forms a compound with fluorine that's got octahedral molecules. Well, the molecule in question is sulfur hexafluoride. And so the element is sulfur. Part five, an element that reacts with water to form an acidic solution. So there's a reaction we need to know from the specification, which is a reaction of chlorine with water. So Cl2 plus H2O, HCl and HClO are the product. They're both acids. So the answer is chlorine. Next one, so to get the MR of X, we basically just subtract three from 34. So we get 31. So of course that's phosphorus. Part seven now, so an element that forms a compound with hydrogen, where the element's got an oxidation number of minus four. Well, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one, unless it's bonded to a metal. So to get an oxidation number of minus four, we're going to need carbon. And the final one, the element that has a density of that many grams per cubic centimeter at room temperature and pressure, so this is obviously hinting at the 24 dm cubed rule or 24,000 cm cubed rule. So if we multiply this mass by 24,000, we're going to find the mass of a mole of the substance. So that's coming out at 31.92 grams. So we must be talking about elemental oxygen and so oxygen or O2 would be fine for the answer there. Moving on to part B now, so we've got to explain the properties of these period three chlorides in terms of structure and bonding. You'll see I've color coded the first two in green and these three in pink. So basically these two have got something in common in terms of structure and bonding. Likewise, these three have as well. So we'll talk about these two first and then move on to those. So sodium chloride and magnesium chloride first, they both have giant ionic lattice structures. The poor conductors when solid since the ions can't move, but they're good conductors when liquid because the ions can move. They've got high melting points because they've got strong ionic bonds holding the oppositely charged ions together in the lattice. And finally, moving on to the chlorides of silicon, phosphorus and sulfur, they've all got simple covalent or molecular structures. So they're poor conductors when solid and liquid because they don't have any freely moving charged particles. And they've got low melting points, much lower than these two, because they have weak London forces between the molecules. 